Um, hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I'm Miriam, and together with my dear collaborator, Anne, uh, we're going to be presenting the resource project, which is the culmination of what we've been up to during this Unlock Accelerator. So if you've been hanging out on your Twitter feeds or maybe reading the news lately, uh, I think these are some stories uh, that may look a little bit familiar. Um, and I think the past year, especially the past few weeks and the past week, uh, has really brought to the forefront how deeply reliant we are on global supply chains, uh, something that typically stays out of sight, out of mind for so many of us. And for those of you unfamiliar, or vaguely familiar with the term, uh, supply chains refer to the activities that are required uh, to ensure the production and circulation of goods and services across the globe. And of course, what's so interesting about supply chains is that they only call attention to themselves and become visible when they stop working, as we've seen over the past couple of weeks. But this in itself raises uh, an interesting question about what it means for supply chains to be working or not and who it is that we're really talking about when we say that they work or not. And so for us, what this highlights is two sort of different ways of understanding supply chains. On the one hand, you have supply chains as a science of management and logistical precision, and just making sure that things uh, end up where they need to be as quickly, smoothly, and cheaply as possible. And on the other hand, you have an understanding of supply chains as a set of arrangements and principles that structure the lives and work of millions of people around the world um, and the rights that they hold or not in doing that work. And so what we're really interested in is um, how these stories are shaped uh, by different actors who mobilize different types of information, how this information is then received by different publics, um, and how this all relates back to uh, the larger theme of trust. Uh, so with this as sort of background context for the project, I'm going to pass it on to Anne to tell us a little bit more about what we've been up to over this past year. Well, thanks, Miriam. Uh, so it's really by kind of combining and contextualizing these two ways of understanding supply chains, um, taking open data, audits, ranking, even impact measurements, and contextualizing them with open source investigations and open knowledge that we hope to help people to really kind of cut through corporate jargon to, to kind of be able to understand and tease out the contradictions between the two. So really, as I was saying before, um, the resource project is a research project um, that seeks to understand and, and learn more about these processes as they change and evolve over time. But in its forward facing and in its public facing form, it's a browser extension and a web application. And finally, and I'll talk about this a little bit more later, um, it's an emerging open data community uh, that seeks to gather different repositories or types of information together. But really, we wouldn't be here uh, without the support of Unlock, and it's been uh, a crazy 2021. Uh, we kind of began the year with a series of workshops uh, with a um, reading group that we began with other researchers, um, but a lot ch started to change in July. It was really in that first sprint that we realized um, that we needed to kind of de-scope, scope, take a step back into the kind of foundation of the project. Um, during sprint number two, that was actually when very concretely the notion of the browser extension came into play. And then it was during sprint three where you noticed that kind of two steps forward, uh, three steps back, where we'd realized that we kind of needed to return to the foundations of the project after conducting a number of user testing sessions. But really, um, so much has changed even in the past week. We recently added another member to the team, Madeleine O'Leary, who's coming to us from the Terms of Service Didn't Read a Privacy Project, um, who's joining us as our technical lead. And then we already feel like we have an incredibly strong uh, foundation to build off of in the coming months and beyond, beyond which we're very excited about. But enough about the kind of foundation of the project. I'm going to pass it back on to Miriam to walk us through our team demo. Thank you. Um, okay, so I'm now going to run through sort of the details of the browser extension. Uh, I want to preface this by saying that there is a both a static prototype and also a more dynamic prototype that are in the works uh, being coded. But for the sake of today, we're going to focus a bit more on the kind of structure of the browser extension and the content. Um, and as you can see, the way that it works is uh, as a sort of pop-up modal uh, pop right hand corner of your browser, 
where most of your other extensions are likely to be. Uh, and so you would click on it and, and something will pop up. And this is what I'll get into now. So um, starting with the first sort of panel that you would see, you have the title and then also the name of the company. And so the idea is that, uh, at least in this MVP form, that it um, is responsive to a given do domain that you're on. So Apple is the case. Uh, and so then the first thing you see just below the name of the company uh, is a snapshot of data that is taken from novaj.org, um, which gives you just some basic information about um, the company supply chain. Uh, below that, there is then a three a tab structure, three tabs. I'm going to get into the second and third tab in just a second. Now, the first tab um, focuses on uh, the company's own uh, information that it provides about how it sees this question of working conditions across the supply chain. And so it'll be based off of uh, CSR or sustainability reports of a given company, in this case, Apple. And then it's structured across subtopics uh, that we've structured as a drop down. Remember settings. Uh, and looking a little bit more closely at what would happen if you clicked on one of the drop downs, the idea is that you would be presented with three types of information that uh, also pertain to the three different tabs. So the first thing you would see is the company's own statement on this topic, in this case, wages, benefits, and contracts. So how, how do they see this issue across the supply chain? Second piece of information that you would receive is whether there are any existing investigations that dispute this, and should that be the case, you'd be able to access uh, the source of that investigation. And then the third piece of information, which um, corresponds to a future iteration of the project that's beyond the scope of this MVP, that you would be able to see whether there is an ongoing resource project about that topic uh, regarding that company. And should that be the case, you'd be able to learn more about how to contribute to that. Moving on to the investigations tab, this is a different kind of information that is no longer from the company itself. Um, in this MVP iteration, we uh, rely on stories from uh, the Business and Human Rights Research Center, which sort of compile um, news, and it would be using their uh, RSS feed, um, and we would get uh, sort of investigative stories about the company uh, and labor conditions across the supply chain for the company, which would then be organized um, through topics and geography. And for the third tab, which we've tentatively called uh, RSC data as a play on both CSR and the resource, um, this tab relates to how we see the project uh, in the future. And so while we don't know exactly what it will look like, this is where we want there to be a space for crowdsourcing and open collaboration. And um, what's really important to us here is to not develop the project in a siloed way as a kind of standalone thing, but rather to recognize that there are uh, so many other existing efforts that also embrace this uh, open knowledge ethos uh, also about this topic. And we want to be able to work in tandem with them sort of supporting and strengthening each other. And so two notable examples are uh, the Wikivert project, which is uh, an open data community that documents uh, CSR uh, corporate um, standards and behavior across the supply chain. And also um, the Wiki project, uh, Organized Labor, which seeks to expand Wikipedia coverage of uh, worker organizing and training in history. But to talk to us a little bit more concretely about our next steps, I'm going to pass it back to Anne. Great. So really, what does that look like in real time? Well, in the short term, that honestly looks a lot like what we've already been doing over the past couple of months, uh, which is talking to as many people as you can, uh, doing more user research and testing as we kind of iteratively try to co-create features that will be useful for people within the universe of supply chains research and advocacy. And um, we also help to kind of begin to scaffold the process of what a crowdsourcing model could look like, um, as well as some live kind of data integrations through APIs in real time. Uh, we also applied for sources of funding to support us through that process. Um, in the long term, though, we hope to kind of be more actively integrated into the wider landscape of open knowledge and open data surrounding labor issues um, through groups like WikiRate, which Miriam had mentioned, as well as the Wiki projects and wider Wikipedia universe, as well as be regularly running workshops and other modes of contribution for people. 
um, as well as have, of course, our extension out in the, the universe. Um, the goal, of course, being expanding into other industries and developing web applications besides that. But with all of that being said, um, if any of this was interesting to you, uh, we would love if you got involved. Uh, there's so many ways uh, to contribute. We just are just getting started. We'd love to talk to you if you do work related to supply chains, if you're interested in testing our extension as we're in beta mode and real-time development right now. Um, you can follow us through our social media channels, whether that's on Twitter, joining our, our um, mailing list or sending us an email. Um, but we're very, very open to uh, collaboration and we'd love to hear from you in real time.